Welcome to Sync... <clears throat> Jeez Louise. Way to cough right at the beginning of it. Welcome to Synchronicity. We have a wonderful guest this week, Laura. She has her Instagram, Tales of Laura, and her podcast, which she hasn't done in a little bit, but will be doing again, Pussy Church. She's been on the podcast a bunch of times. Always great to connect with her. Um, we cover a lot of stuff in this episode, the importance of writing, um, various practices, which you can do to kind of stimulate your mind, some involving your body. Um, it's fun. You're going to love it. Uh, before we get started, a big shout out to my sponsors, Ned. Go to helloned.com. Use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C, at checkout and get 15% off your order. Go check out their latest product, Shut Eye Chai. This is a chai tea that helps you get some restful, useful sleep. It's loaded with magnesium and other cool stuff. They're awesome. They're great. Check them out. HelloNed.com. Use the code SYNC at checkout. Get 15% off. Uh, we're continuing the imagination illumination thing we've been doing that's going great. We're having a lot of fun with it. You can catch that on the Patreon where we're kind of like following up with each other and holding each other accountable. And we're doing live streams every Thursday. So if you've been on the fence about the Patreon, this is a good time to join. We're actually doing stuff. I'm on there. It's fun stuff. And we got the live stream like really sorted out. So it's like actually working. We're having fun. It's good times. Uh, readings are open. You can check those out on the website, syncpodcast.com slash reading. Slink, that's not a way to say that, slash readings. Uh, you can also go and see the links on wherever you're getting this podcast. There's a clickable button. That's it. Uh, go check out Laura, uh, primarily on Instagram. She releases a ton of stuff there. You can go check her out at Tales of Lara, L-A-R-A. -A. Uh, that's it. I'll see you on the flip side of this episode. Cool stuff. Well, I'll say we just spoke off air just for a second. We officially just hit the record button, but welcome to Synchronicity, Lara. Ooh, thank you. It's so good to be back. Yeah, it's a fun place to be. I We Definitely. were just talking about, you're like, what, you know, we've done this enough times that we don't really need to bring up any topics specifically to speak about, but I was like, you know, I am doing this <laughs> <Hopefully>. thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guarantee it. Like, I, I there's some people that I just don't worry about, like, really having to carry on a conversation with or, like, find things to speak about. And, like, I know we've done, like, long podcasts um, in person and, and like this that are just effortless. So I'm not worried about it. But we were talking about this imagination illumination thing where I'm doing where I was basically like, you know, we're just writing shit down into a notebook where every single day we're talking about either affirmations or desires or manifestations or goals or whatever it is. And I was like, you know, the power of writing something mm -hmm. down and then having it expressed, you know, via your subconscious, your soul, whatever you want to call it, seems to be like an acute relationship. And like, I noticed that and that's why we're doing it again. And then, of course, as I'm saying this to you, I'm realizing like you write shit all the time and you were like, all I have 150 time. notebooks. So <laughs> I, I, I do. <laughs> but I started writing when I was so funny. I looked at my notebooks this past summer or something, you know, I organized them all and I was like, so strange. I started writing with 11, you know, so it's, it's yeah. been a bit like, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and so you've been writing about, I'm sure a lot of different things in like your life and just Tons, also like, yeah. you know, the stuff you write for your, you know, the, the aspects of like the erotic kind of exotic stuff that yeah. poetry. So what have you, notice we'll talk about what's going on in our lives like and just kind of the craziness of everything else and weave that in but i'm just wondering like as a meta thing what have you noticed like the relationship is between the stuff you write down about your life mm. or about what you want and how that is ultimately expressed on the screen of reality it's interesting because i think you um you kind of mentioned this before we started recording in a sense of like periods in your life where things click differently you know and yeah. i um i think with my writing it goes in phases like sometimes writing is a little bit more to get myself through some kind of manifestation that i'm not so mm. happy with or um or kind of manifesting future things so I do see kind of like an ebb and flow I mean I write all the time and I write everywhere I write in a notebook um a lot like every day nearly with I write a pen and, yeah. with a pen yes pen and paper yeah. always and then 
anywhere else, like, you know, the note app. Uh, and I just write on little pieces of paper because there's a lot of thoughts that I have. Um, I think it's just where I make sense of the world, you know, and mm. or of my world. So with manifestation, I think, I mean, I've learned that the more specific you can get, the better, because I've manifested things where I was like, Yes, that's what I wanted, but not exactly <laughs> like that. So, you know, I was like, yes, I said I wanted to fall in love like crazy. Um, maybe I should have put a little bit more details to that. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, that's, stuff like that. Where I was like, I got what I wanted, but it looks a little different than I was hoping well, for. Or something like one, that. Of, one of the reasons I think that happens is like the aspect of our mind that generates experience, what we eventually perceive like after the fact as like what's going on there's no sense of humor there's no <laughs> irony there's no ability to qualify qu like really process the subtleties of what we consciously understand those things to be it's just literal it's like you want mm -hmm. that i will literally give you exactly that and a lot of people miss that sometimes they're just consenting to thoughts that is exactly what they don't want they're just thinking about mm, those things so the subconscious yes. mind is just like hey i'll give you that no problem you got it buddy like here but you that's go. like terrifying right because when you like have some yeah. work, like thoughts that are not so positive or something you're just like oh my god am i making well, this worse <laughs> this is something that i noticed that when i let those thoughts run amok and unchecked mm. it's not that like they don't happen at times when things are clicking it's just your relationship to them fundamentally mm. changes so one thing i've noticed is like if i catch a thought that is counter to what my intentions and like real belief and desire i intend it to be i'll just charge it the other way like i will take the time to create a thought that is of equal magnitude in the positive ah. direction and so it gives you a, an ability to you know honestly and you know this this is not that different than like Buddhist meditation, like you're just watching your thoughts and just being totally. aware of what's coming across on the screen of your mind. So when you're able to do that, if you are like a rapid thinker or you're able to notice like a repetitive obsessiveness or like ruminating on certain things, you can use that to your advantage because every time one of those thoughts comes up, you're flipping it in the other direction because you're not just like being like, oh no, this is something that's bad, but it's, oh yeah, I can actually take the time to kind of like direct this in the direction I want to go in. It's like a judo flip energy wise. I like wise. that. Yeah, because I've had um, in the past fall, I had this kind of phase of a couple of mon months where I caught myself creating a lot of stories. So I'm a storyteller, right? And a writer. So it's, but I created these stories, you know, out of habit, you know, um, things that would scare me really in the end. And I would catch myself getting all emotional about something yeah. completely made up. And right. I, was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, this doesn't exist. So it was a really strange thing where I could start seeing really the patterns of how my thoughts were going, right? Yeah. Or what I was creating to actually create some pain for myself in yeah. like some strange way. I don't know if that makes any sense. But No, the, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this is a pattern, is a habit of mine to be scared about this or like, to maybe even indulge in um, the emotion of, you know, I'm really big on, I mean, my life is very <laughs> funny. Like <laughs> um, my shaman once said to me, he's like, you know, less drama in your life, more drama on the page, you know? So, yeah. because I'm really, I'm full of emotion and full of maybe, Shakespearean emotion nearly. So to kind of catch myself not doing that in my life was, and more putting that more into my work was a real yeah. big difference. That's huge. That's actually a really good, like transformational activity to do with that type of energy because it is often something that can kind of just get out of control and like you don't allow the drum. Like I was joking the other day on Twitter and it's true. Like m like 80% of my life is like a soap opera. It's like a oh, classical yeah. <laughs> soap opera, literal, but like not even like in my mind, I'm blowing it up to those proportions. Like the actual events that are taking place are ridiculous. Like they're really like you, you wouldn't write mm -hmm. this in a show because you'd be like, this is too silly. Like this is not really how things are supposed to go. So I... 
it's it's cool to be able to take that energy and then apply it creatively because I do yeah. think that's one of the things that comes along with like being sensitive or emotional or feeling things very deeply is that's a very powerful catalyst for creating totally. stuff and realities and I mean that in both ways, like the actual way of like creating something artistically, but also just creating your reality because that's the charge that's needed to actually summon forth like real, ch- like it has to be a truly heartfelt, felt thing for it to actually exist in the world. It may seem to you as a retro retroactive feeling of like, I feel it afterwards, but you actually have to believe this shit for it to happen in your life. And that's why when things kind of, at least for me, spiral or get dark or it like takes like way too long to kind of get out of a mindset that's not really conducive or aligned with what I'm trying to do, which I think just also to be clear, a lot of people experience over the past two, three years. Like this is not a unique necessary experience, even though it probably feels like that to everyone. It's like the energy of the world got halted in a really dramatic and unnatural way that we're still still dealing with kind of the aftershocks of that. And so people like well, totally. Yeah, I mean, I think I think nuts. it's it's I think it's nice to remind yourself of that because otherwise, I mean, I'm talking about myself, but I think we can yeah, yeah. all become so self focused, right, and be like, oh my god, my life's just like it's so much shit's going on, or it's like a soap opera, right? I always feel like I always say mine's like an opera <laughs> or something. Um, um, and I'm like, oh my god, why? Yours is the you know? classy. <laughs> yours is the classy version of the thing. Dude, Mine's the trash. It's horrible. TV show. Don't people die like in the opera? <laughs> That's um, true. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, but the thing is, I think that when you kind of put things into context, right, and you kind of you allow yourself to think. I mean, I think for women especially. Let's say this is like a really classic example. Yeah. With your period, right, having PMS that there is a moment where the hormones take over and you just, you know, either you get all weepy or you get angry and you want to fucking kill everybody. And there's this moment where you're like, oh shit, I'm going to get my period in a day or two. That kind of gives you, like meditation, strangely enough, a little bit of distance from that feeling. And we could do this every day, right? But we don't. But yeah, I mean, I can speak to like calm down. <laughs> I've seen that process from living with women for most of my adult <laughs> life. I did the calculations the other day. I'm like, shit, I really have. Like, I have gotten to know the cycles of PMS and mm-hmm. really like watch women realize that hey, maybe your hormones are just are, are really, <laughs> really real. attuned right now and it's really close to a full moon. And this shit is maybe yes. you're not that mad about this specific thing. <laughs> no. It, it is an you don't want to kill your neighbor you um actually, yeah yeah I mean, yeah it's, it's pretty w- it's intense. wild but i think the same thing would go for like right you're like oh my god just my life is so crazy and you're like oh actually we we're experiencing a lot of upheaval and like um the world's very different than it was three four three four years ago right and to to be kind to yourself within yeah. that experience because it's not just us right it's i mean this is like the collective dream, right? That we are ha- experiencing, and then absolutely, and then there's our individual dreams, obviously. Or yeah, and the intersection is, I think, what a lot of us are are naturally trying to navigate. Because not only are we like in the world in like a natural state of being, but like we're in the cultural and societal times that we live in too. It's I don't view it as like an accident or a random set of circumstances that led us to this point in time and experience. Like I think time is infinite. We could have incarnated across a crazy spectrum of possibility, but we chose here for a reason. And then the, the cycles, the I know, I know <laughs> that's a fair question. I mean, and like the, obviously like one of the, the major facets of having been alive over the past 20, 30, 40 years, even like, is that there's this change factor that is so hyper inflated relative. And maybe humans felt like this for all of history, but just, it's undeniable that the rapid, not just technological, but like psychic awareness possibilities that kind of the internet in large part kind of ushered in, but it's gone way past that. It's changing what we view as like culture and society in a way that like is almost like it's breakneck speed. It is like, uh, it is so fast. It's so crazy how quickly things can turn on a dime and consciousness can now be crystallized and focused in such an apparent way in various directions. And I think what that really points to, or at least like 
the point of it is, is to recognize that intersection of like where you are consenting and creating this collective dream and phasing in in terms mm. of awareness and yes. making that like a kind of central role. So it is, of course, like I, I always play this kind of like dancing game in my mind when, you know, it's like self-centeredness or being selfish. It's like the reason you are that if at any points and that shouldn't have a negative connotation most of the time is that's your only reliable, consistent reference like 99% of the time. Yes, like, and kind of source <laughs> of control, right? In the sense of like, of course. I, I can uh, I can control my behavior or my reaction at least, right? Or my interaction with the world around me to a certain degree. So there, there is something, you know, about responsibility. Yeah. And even if you're controlless at times and you feel like you have no power and your mind just like overpowers you or you just emotionally get dragged into a state that you just feel like you can't get out of, one of the cool things that I've found, and even though it's not always reliably accessible, is like really just like letting the fuck go at that point. Psychedelics are really good at teaching us this because yes. there's a point where if you fight a psychedelic, <laughs> it's a losing battle in the worst I've possible that way. I've the hard way. <laughs> I have too. It is not I really, comfortable. I mean, it's yeah. wild, but I mean, it really is a great example, I think, for, for life, you know, in general. And I think emotions too, if you think about it in that way, as it is, yeah. like, I like this idea of you are the ocean, right? And emotions are waves that come and go and that you've been alive for long enough or conscious for long enough that you know that they come and go. So there can be some kind of detachment. I mean, you can yeah. practice it, obviously, you know, as I just mentioned PMS or something. And I do think, you know, I want to kill somebody. Literally, I just had this thing like a week ago and I was like, I think I'm going to say I am. If I had a knife. Um, no, but like I wanted to about, you know, testosterone, for example, because this thought process of like, I mean, this is going completely different direction probably <laughs> conversation. No, 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 no. but um a friend of mine transitioned uh, a few years ago and he started taking male hormones you know to stop right right and since he didn't have um teenage years to like process and learn you know how to yeah. deal with testosterone really he was just like flooded with like, he was like, I've never been so angry in my life. <laughs> like I want to kill yeah. everybody. I want to destroy everything. And that it's, there is a reason why we are slowly, you know, um, becoming adults or um, just having to deal with like different emotions and stuff. But really in the end, these are hormones that you're taking, but we've, we face that part every day. Absolutely. It's undeniable too. Like the, the hormones are just going to accentuate kind of states of being that exist. I also can like, I, you know, I got a, I had back pain once and they gave me steroids. This is like a mm. decade ago. And I, I had never taken steroids. Like I had never taken an oral steroid, maybe like a topical for like, you know, like a rash or something. I don't even remember. But basically I was taking these for a couple of days and I was so jacked and mad at <laughs> everything and i couldn't figure out why i'm like why is everything pissing me off like why am i ready to like fight in every center i was like holy shit it's the steroids i don't really take them anymore i mean they're useful they're anti-inflammatory so i'm not going to deny course, the yeah. power of what these things can do medically but um yeah the the hormones though they they accentuate what's there which are these aspects of being and our kind of um, resonance with them as energies. I think the trans stuff is actually like a really interesting thing in society that's going on because it's like a physical representation of what everyone kind of is having to go through psychically, yes. um, and spiritually. Like, and yes. that can be like someone who just doesn't understand like the trans thing to them in their mind. They're like, well, that's fine. You don't have to understand why someone would want to be identifying as a different gender or experience reality as a different gender. You don't have to understand that. But you can understand the principle of wanting to change your reality in totally. a way that would feel more comfortable and fulfilling and more and on really, brand. And manif manifestation is like that to a certain degree, right? Like where yeah. you, I mean, granted, obviously that's a little bit different. And I think it's interesting because we can see these things so easily, I think, if you just think about, oh, this is the hormones or whatever, or the steroids, right? Right. right. But then to have that awareness to be like, oh, these are just my emotions. It's not yeah. me, right? Exactly. This is be me being triggered, you know, some old woundings or whatever the hell it is or some, and it's not me and it doesn't have to be me. So I think, right. or, 
or stay with me or like you said earlier right like just letting the shit go <laughs> yeah to practice it and listen it, it's always easier to say this when you're not of activated course. right and i'm just like oh yeah of course let them of go. course of course <laughs> Our perfect um, selves. The podcast I, version of, of everyone is always totally. the perfect. He's so capable of giving g- great advice that they always take and, and nothing, everything goes wrong. And Dude, like, I mean, I'm like that in real life. I give my friends like incredible advice. You know, I'm just, I mean, I give of also for work. I give advice for work and I'm just like, oh, that's so funny because last year was real difficult. I'm like, yeah, this course. is interesting. You know, also though, everything that you experience that is difficult or it's challenging for you, will make you if you work with it through it whatever right you'll get more compassionate for other people's experience exactly that's the being able to see that though as a real benefit and like power of that um is a a, a extremely important skill just because otherwise the tendency towards like cynicism Mm -hmm. and doomsaying and feeling shitty and acting shitty like objectively all the time like those chances go up so much like it's really what you're in resonance with and it's true like the coolest thing about like getting knocked off the horse right is you do get to get back on like you do absolutely it's a choice you it might be you might got real fucked up in the fall but like you absolutely have the ability to kind of get back up if you want to from a, a true metaphysical sense like that's what we're doing by choosing to be alive. Like it is a choice yeah. on a very deep autonomic fundamental level, but really it is. Like, and I think you can see that like when like, you know, uh, old people, if like a spouse dies or like they quit their job and you can see that their reason for living was like kind of taken away that's and they're like, I'm out of this shit. And they just die because they're like, I don't <laughs> want to do this shit. So they're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is my reason that I liked living primarily. Like, I'm not into this. I'm getting off this fucking ride. But and I so, mean, like, maybe at that age, you know, like we have, I mean, I just, um, God, this is going to get dark real quick. No, let's keep it. I mean, we talk about it all here. That's what I, good. um, Okay, so, you know, I'm in my early 30s. I had never had a suicidal thought in my life until last year. Oh, I also joined the suicide stra- train in the have past, you? like, year and a half. Yeah, oh because I was God. just like... because the I just had is, this, one, this one thought, and it was... It only happened once, so... I, listen, and then everybody told me they have it all the time, and I'm like, oh, God. God. <laughs> yeah, but it's more common than people think, yeah. I was so shocked by that moment, because I hadn't met myself in this place yet you know right maybe you can just put it actually in like an interesting now in retrospective obviously you could be like wow i haven't met myself there yet interesting that exists right as long as you don't do it and um i hadn't i didn't have a plan or anything right to do it but i just had this moment where i was like i "I don't you know i went through a really heart heartbreaking breakup (laughs) uh gut-wrenching and i was just like Oh my God! What what am I doing here? Like I don't. Yeah. For what? What is this for? Yeah. What's the purpose? Yeah. What's the purpose? But maybe since I'm not eighty, I had like I was like, okay, well, this is shocking me, like into into life, back into life, right? This thought like scared me so much that I was like, okay, this cannot be it, you know? For Which me. is a, a healthy reaction. I don't mean to say that in like a a um like a clinical sense i mean to say that like you're you're here because you want to be so until you decide to absolutely not do that you are making that decision continuously just from an experiential point like from a very deep kind of like out of world higher dimensional sense like that is a choice that is being made by your being to incarnate in this perspective so a healthy reaction to a thought which i've also you know, had at times they're fleeting. I have a similar reaction in the sense that it feels not resonant with my being. It doesn't feel like Mm -hmm. something and an energy I want to reside in and feel is worthy of living in. But I do think it's important to come into contact with stuff like that because it also does give you the perspective of someone who maybe really is feeling like that a lot of the time. There's not like you can do something necessarily. I think ultimately that's a choice that like an individual makes on like a very deep level. So it's not like you could prevent it, but being able to experience that depth of kind of despair, hopelessness, like just kind of depression 
it's important to be able to touch those places because it does give you a healthier and more well-rounded kind of view of what it is to be alive because we can forget I mean, yes. that shit. You know? I mean, in, in some kind of a sense, if you can see it with more distance, it is just experiencing all the different facets of being human, right? And despair and hopelessness are aspects of consciousness and of of being alive, right? In that moment, you're just like, well, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> I don't really care about it. Yeah, but right. um, I read this book, um, Arrows and Pathos. Oh, cool. And it's it's about well, it's like Jungian, you know, Jungian psychology. Um, oh, it's amazing. And he he writes about um, love, basically, and a lot of different aspects. So I don't agree with everybody everything he says, but it's very interesting to see how much um, people. I mean, listen. People have despair about a lot of different things, but if you just like look at it like heartbreak or love or something yeah, like that, yeah, of right? course, of course. How how much really the us humans like thrive off connection and integration and like becoming one and then becoming two again and these aspects of us. But when you when you experience this, um, whatever it is in your life, right? Some hardship, let's say, just because it's easier that way, and maybe also because of those years that we just had. Um, you can, you can really teach yourself, right? Different things. Like how can I be there for myself and how do I support other people when I see them going through it yeah, or, yeah. you know, you have a different reference point. Otherwise, you know, if everything's amazing, you're just like, oh, you're feeling bad. I don't know what that is. <laughs> It'll, yeah. And that, that perspective also allows you to move through situations more like, with more agency and control than you otherwise would have. And that that means that mm. you're not immune from the suffering that is life if we're looking at it no. in the Buddhist lens, but your ability to identify and resonate and recognize that as just kind of not a bad thing, but a place just like any other. And then recognizing yes. you get to really do, you really do on a fundamental level when you get familiar with this ability choose which states of consciousness you ultimately embody like that is really a choice that we all make now there may be a myriad of reasons and situations and challenges in our life that we're like well i'm still working on these i'm still working on this one but <laughs> they're nevertheless that kind of challenge uh, you know this just from going through challenges and kind of overcoming them that is like the solution or the resonance or the sense of fulfillingness you're looking at it through like in that realm right if we were looking at it from like an astrological sense it's in that house that house probably has the energy that you're being asked to deal with in that specific way um yes. it's it, it really is like a powerful kind of because once you surrender to that you then weirdly at least get to acknowledge and deal with it from like a real place of like foundational support like in balance like otherwise you're like fighting against this thing that seems to get bigger and stronger you know, m the more you try to kind of tackle it from a certain level. And yeah, it does kind of like what I've been focusing on, at least with this, all these writing prompts and things that we can do on a daily basis to kind of focus ourselves is, is noticing like my reactions to things that I'll write down, not only in the mm -hmm. moment, but over time as like a series of kind of reflections that I can look at like why well, I remember on that day that I didn't believe this shit at all and now <laughs> yeah. you know I feel like this is the easiest thing in the world or oh this thing happened in between there that reminded me that this is possible and that kind of reflectionary thing like in writing is actively what our minds are doing on a regular basis it's how we're actually creating this kind of place we called existence and reality it's so fascinating with writing i think because i mean for me personally since yeah. i've been writing for so long so for me sometimes it's really like aspects of my experience start making sense when i start writing right so right, right in reflection in reflection they start making sense but i think there's also part of like an uncensoredness that i taught myself with myself in a sense that I think a lot of times you start writing um, or you don't do it very often and you think like, oh, who am I writing this for? Or how do right. I want to see myself? How do I want to represent myself? Um, instead of 
oh, anything I write today doesn't is not me necessarily, right? It doesn't like define who I am. So in that sense of purging and then replenishing, you can do all of it on the page. Right. Right. So I think it's such an incredible tool. I mean, listen, I don't know. I would like to hear your opinion. I think some people might, writing is easier for them or makes them feel better and some have other outlets or something. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing with writing. It is a skill that most people are familiar with. Like it's mm. just something that it, it there is a direct link between our subconscious mind and the ability to write something down without even speaking it. It's like the same thing the way I look at like Twitter and social media. When you remove this ability to be in the company of people and have to think about the thing that you're going to say before you say it, even if it's a split second, it's a decision you're making, that's a very powerful moment. When you eliminate that and you can just write it down or tweet it out or write something out, um, there's a different process entirely. It like fundamentally changes the equation of what is being transmitted. So I, I think it's something that everyone possesses the ability to do in large part. You know, right. if you're illiterate, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's still a way you can do it. You can do it through voice and other things. It's not the only way. It's just that you can write down something and that process of focusing and ideally imbuing it with a sense of intention, yes. that's like, that's very powerful it, it it's it's also simple relatively like its simplicity relative to its power is like something i definitely resonate with in life is like if it can be easy and powerful and not like completely destructive i'm into that like that's something <laughs> I, I i enjoy that it doesn't always have to be a hard slog to get the jewel at the top of the fucking mountain sure yeah. once in a while but like i do like the simple kind of powerful things ways to change reality and i do think it serves that function yeah, I think so too. I mean, listen, it it has a lot of functions, but I think there's there is you're right. I mean, there's a simplicity of just um and you're there by yourself. It's like a nice nice place to be, the page. It is meditation <laughs> in like a very true sense, right? And it does yeah, I love it. I have I have like a relationship with the page. You know, like it whatever you I mean, you can do this with anything, but I think there is something to be said about like like you said meditation or it's like a prayer or whatever you believe in, right? There's some space that I'm giving myself and I'm um, I'm looking at and I'm reflecting or like you said, creating, right? Um, and it's a very powerful thing if you just think about it in a very simplistic way because there's a blank page and then there's not a blank page. Like you are creating in that moment. So it's kind of, it's, it's a really wild, wild place to be actually. Yeah, and it's 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 true. It's it's an it's it's like one of the more powerful al alchemical tools we have in terms of like changing our reality. Which is why I told like that's why I did this thing on the show. I was like, listen, here's the fucking deal. You can hear me yammer about this for fucking five <laughs> years. That's great, wonderful. Who doesn't like listening to someone who has some actual tools for you know making things better in your life? I love but tools. if you don't put them, yeah, if you don't put them in your arsenal if you don't employ these things they're fucking useless it's like building yeah. up like a huge amazing studio i'll use it in my personal sense and never using any of it i've done that at various times and i can tell you it's not a great feeling it's not like you mm -hmm. run out of the excuses you potentially had to even do the thing so just do the fucking shit like use the techniques use your ability to kind of recognize your pattern of thought write them down shift them in the way that's why i really do often like I do speak about it so much. Like it's very important to get aligned with what it is you want and what your desires truly are. It, you shouldn't, mm -hmm. in my opinion, have the relationship where desire is something that's going to drag you down into the depths of sin or like it's going to, you know, give you bad karma because you're focusing on like, you know, a causal mm -hmm. phenomena. That's, that's not a useful approach primarily because it's not the time we live in. Like good luck trying to unplug yourself from the system of wanting anything in this life. Yeah. Like, are you yeah, crazy? Yeah. <laughs> that tool insane. doesn't work. Maybe that worked like 2000 years ago where you didn't see someone for like a few weeks and you're like, yo, let's just withdraw. Cause like, yeah, well, I don't have to interact with anyone, but it just, it's not really practical for today's world and how most people feel for better, or for worse, comfortable kind of integrating into like what well, we plug into. also having the responsibilities, day. right? Like in, in yeah. order to survive and stuff. But so wait, what what are some of the prompts that you recommend people work with? 
I'm here, I'll take out um Yeah. I'll take out my uh Gosh, I've done like everything like at this point, but I'm super interested because there's always, listen, I think, um, I mean, you know, the artist's way, right? By, by Julia Cameron, of course, of um, course. which one of the things that she writes about in this book, um, if anybody hasn't read it, um, it's kind of like a path to, and I reignite your creativity, but one part is called morning pages and she recommends, I think, what is it? 12 weeks or something, um, to write every morning, three pages by hand. Yeah, Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there's so many cool ways, and I think, you, like, let's see your prompts. But if you can even keep it shorter, then it doesn't seem like such a. Big I've been anything. getting into. I'll read some of the ones that I've written down and kind of abstracted from. I really. Um, like a lot of the Joseph Murphy stuff, he was a contemporary of Neville Goddard's, and kind of, I think the secret with him is you have to recognize every time he's talking about. God, ah. he's referring mm -hmm. to the kind of super conscious aspect of our being, whereas the conscious is our mind we're familiar with, and the subconscious would be kind of on a soul level. So you think soul, individual, conscious individual, super consciousness is like we are all one. So when you can kind of replace that conception of being, um, it makes them a little bit easier. But I also d then tend to abstract them into like taking away the word God because I notice even in me and I'm pretty damn accepting of all connotations rel relative to the divine. God has a, a yeah. resonance with it. It has a tone to yeah. it that I'm not going <laughs> to deny and I'm not going to pretend like it's not there and just be like, whoa, okay. So I try to like just integrate it in the best possible way. Totally. So. One of the ones that I like to focus on is a very meta kind of skill, which I, I think is good, which is I have the power to create my own reality and I use this power wisely to manifest my desires and goals. That's mm. it. It's simple. Okay. It's to the point. It's reaffirming some aspect of creation that you are good at and it's focusing it on things where you would naturally want achievement in those levels. So desires and goals. Um here is another one. Um, oh, it's the same one there I wrote. Uh, so that uh, here's, like here's a good one. Yeah, it's affir these are totally affirmations that are literally not meant to have me creatively express myself in a way where I'm just like free writing, like kind of in the, the artist it. way type thing. It is focused, kind of like almost zen-like, uh, consistency in terms of writing down the way I'm feeling relative to what um, like I want. So another one is like I am I'm the source of my own supply. All of my needs are met at every moment of time and point in space. Right. This mm -hmm. is another one. Infinite intelligence guides me in all ways. It God's riches flow to me freely, joyously, ceaselessly, endlessly. <laughs> I am advancing, moving forward, and growing mentally, spiritually, financially, and all other ways. I'm just like right to the point with all of this shit. And then what I'm saying, like, this is what I want to get across with like this type of exercise is just as important as the writing of it down, it's recognizing your internal reactions to what you yes. write down are. That's what I just That's, wanted to say. You have like an emotional connection or something, right? Yeah, you have to have yeah. an emotional connection and you have to also yeah. be aware if there's a little voice in your head that's going, bullshit, mm -hmm. not real, stupid, yes. corny, whatever it is. And if you this have were to just true, feel, why is my life like that? Yeah. Yeah, because you, you <laughs> need that to be kind of a... A booster. And one of the things I, I, I write almost after every kind of like day's worth of doing this is all right. I know these truths are sinking into my subconscious mind mm. and I know and believe they will grow and prosper in their kind, like basically just kind of advancing that way of thinking because it's one of the few things we actually like get to kind of communicate with our subconscious is like this is one of the ways there's a lot of other ways there's music yes. there's arts there's sex there's all of these things sex mm. is an incredibly powerful one and i mean there's yes, I, i'm sure most people notice the connection between I kind of creation we, yeah but i think most people don't really use sex um in that way i mean yeah, listen, probably, out. i i really I, I mean i think they can and they should i mean it's I mean, this is kind of what my work's based on, really, obviously. Um, if people don't know, I'm an erotica writer. And, but yes, I think, yes. 
<laughs> your, 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 your bias towards one direction, but it doesn't make it any less valid. And it's super true. Like, no. it's also something that's, you, you, we've talked about this plenty of times, but like the taboo nature and kind of sex being suppressed as kind of an expression of life for such a long period of time. Totally. Naturally imbues it with kind of this power well, that, that's there yeah i mean it's yeah i it's mean there. that could there could be though i mean obviously with sex i mean the, and listen it's kind of similar with the affirmations right there could be a lot of things that come up within you um that happen through conditioning and through society and like maybe experiences that will keep you from being able to use your sexuality in this kind of life affirming way right which then is just like it's actually nice if you start listening to yourself, right? Also, same thing, like thoughts of shame and, um, you know, of, I don't know, self-censoring and fear. All of these things you can work through, right? And you'll have to in order to get to a place to use sexuality in a transformative way. But in that sense, it's just also a tool to growth and a tool to connection and a tool to get to know yourself better. And a, a drive, like there are very <laughs> yeah. few things in life that really kind of make up most people. And regardless of how you're expressing that kind of drive or suppressing it, whatever it is, totally. it's there. I mean, it's well, that's there. Why, the- that's why it was used for oppression, right? Because it's so easy yeah. to <laughs> handle most people, right? Um, right? In a sense, yeah, of course, because it's one of the, I don't know, three things. Like you breathe, you eat. You fuck. I don't know. You sleep. It's an important part <laughs> of life like that. that, like, even if you're you're having no sex and your views on it are as, you know, asexual as they come, it's still something you have to grapple with. It's still something that exists and you still in the call world. it asexual, right? There's still a right. relation to it. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like, it's, it's a thing that exists and your particular routes for engaging with it are up to you, obviously, as an individual. But totally. it's super powerful. And I also noticed yeah. that, like, I mean, at least for me, I noticed that if I'm not in like a overall positive state of mind where I don't feel like things are moving the way that they should be. And again, this is a, this is a mindset. This is something that I consent to, whether willingly or uh, mm-hmm. knowingly or not. Yes. My sexual drive goes way the fuck down. And it's of not course. that it, it's it, it's just that is also something you can use as a, both a barometer and as a tool to kind of rev up other aspects of your life because it unleashes kind of like the fire or like the fire element that allows kind of things to get going and move in a lot of ways and like a very root primal level. And that's yeah. like a really good catalyst for kind of getting energized about life. So there is it this. It is. It's it, yeah. an interesting thing because I think sexuality is always going to be, or this is my my theory anyways, I think it's a mirror of your emotional state always, as it is a mirror of your relationship with a partner, yeah, or several partners or whatever. But I think there's something, after my breakup, um, or whatever, <laughs> it was difficult but yeah um there was a phase like i'm a very sexual person in case nobody's heard me before um talking about this (laughs) but um and it's and i've used my sexuality also a lot to like get in touch with my body and spirituality and like a lot of things but there was something about like i was so heartbroken that like my body shut off and i was like oh Oh my God, who am I? Like I, right? Couldn't. I was so confused. I was like, I was, "What is going that's on like, with me? <laughs> I, yeah. Who am I?" And then I started. I give my, I give myself a break because I think there's something about, um, also accepting, you know, or like listening to needs. And if the need is like, "Hey, listen, right now you're not gonna have sex," or "Right now yeah. you're not even gonna touch yourself," that's fine. Yeah. And I think after a couple of weeks or three, it was three weeks. I remember because it was like really so strange to me and I was like okay what am I gonna do right even if I don't really feel like it is there some ways that I can get in touch with me physically in order to soothe me to make myself feel good and if that's only just like oiling my body right to because I think there's something in like despair or depression or something or fear where you have out of body right you like Suppress, yes. suppress yes. a lot it of It is very outside. You're that, out of your body. Totally. So in order in order to get back into myself, I started these kind of like breathing techniques and masturbation techniques where I started manifesting things in a, some kind of a sense. 
kind of a cool. mindful mindful masturbation. Like I didn't think about another person or watched porn or something. I was just like, okay, what if I start touching myself? And I just think of sensa- like what's happening sensation wise, right? I'm like, oh, oh, like a real meditation. Paying, yeah, just paying attention. Yeah, exactly. Same huh. thing. Just paying attention to my body. And be like, ah, oh, okay, I feel it like tingling here. Oh, I feel nothing right now. I feel numb. Okay, what if I touch this? So I went into these places. And it was wow. really wild because I started having, <laughs> it sounds so nuts, I don't know, <laughs> but I started having like nearly like a little bit psychedelic visions, you know, in the sense of like, I was just getting into a place where it was more about colors and moving energy around within myself. And it really helped me just to be there with me and start loving my body and get back into feeling, you know? And so then you basically can, you're you telling me... And, you figured out a practice to get super high from masturbating. It's basically what basically. I'm hearing. <laughs> no, no. Basically. But I it all it. came from it's like very on brief, brand. you know? It's, <laughs> it's super on brand. I mean, also just from like a real standpoint, that's fucking cool. I mean, I can tell you in all my years, I never thought to do anything even close to that. I mean, it's like, a, that's like a novelty almost to approach it in a different way, which is cool because again, this is something that like anyone theoretically has the power to do. I mean, and it's sex so magic. Easy. It creates energy so easily. Yeah, of you know? course. Like, that's the that's like what I don't want to be lost here is like that aspect of kind of magical practices or manifestation or imaginal, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like that level of awareness is the place where you kind of like impregnate your thoughts with mm. an idea or like thing that will be expressed. It's the same thing, I guess, as writing it down. So basically in this episode, yes. you learn <laughs> that you can now masturbate to manifest. That's clearly the name of this one. But I mean, that's that's dope. Like I, I never, I I know I've heard of like sex magic in the sense of like, um, yeah. I know some of the Crowley stuff is like people will use orgasm. Oh, I've totally. certainly- But that's a little it, crazy. They're doing like orgies and like rituals. That's like a whole ritualistic thing. <laughs> yeah, but on the same different. level that if you've been with someone and you kind of do recognize like a very spiritual connection while you're having sex, that period yes. for creation is clearly highly charged and brings well, forth like total- I mean, yes. life for real. I mean, in Trust one me, sense. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> Three children now. I am abundantly clear of the relationship between sex and children. <laughs> I get no, it. but I mean, it creates life, and it, there's a life energy in yeah. sexuality, anyways, right? There's something about it that's like life right. and death, right? Where it's it's such a primal aspect of being human, and I think, yeah, I mean, there's sex magic, obviously. It's so interesting. I also had like um, a sex magic practitioner on the podcast last year. Um, because I was kind of interested because I started doing these things and I was like, what am I doing actually, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then see how other people use it that really ritualize it and really manifest it with like a goal. I didn't really do that. I mean, I used right. it more for myself and stuff. But I think that it's all legitimate, you know, in a sense that I think she described it something like a spell, you know, a spell needs like, needs energy, it needs an intention. Yeah. And so you can create that energy through chanting, but you can also create that energy through orgasm. Totally. So. I mean, it is, it's undeniable. Even if you're super <laughs> depressed, if you, if you find the motivation to masturbate, you're going to get a brief moment of yeah, relief but even at the very least. If you can just touch yourself, right? I mean, I think there's such a, we store shame and, um, and, Shame is only one thing, right? Grief, anger, all these things right, in our bodies, right. right? So that's why sometimes I think with like affirmations and stuff, I try to feel things somehow in my body because mm. when it gets too heady for me personally, I'm very, actually funny enough, a very heady person. Um, after talking about this, all this masturbation shit. Um, <laughs> such well, a that's, heady that's person. the trick though, but, that, but also what you're specifically talking about here is not just the act, the physical act, is the connection between yeah. your mind, your soul, and the act. That's the that's the Correct. thing that is yes. the important connection there. So yeah, I get it. No, I, I don't think anyone is surprised that you're heady. I mean, we see, I've seen, especially <laughs> over just the episodes we've recorded, like you clearly have a very active and engaged mind and get joy from engaging with subjects that you get passionate about. That's that's I'm a good thing. Excited. So, I mean, it's pretty, yeah. it's good that you're finding these connections though, between stuff that like, I never thought about really doing that at any point in my life. I never would have. Yeah. You should me, try. It was just, 
yeah you clearly i mean i face. i get it i it it's uh, you don't i am <laughs> gonna do no. it no and see and see it can be just like so, such simple i mean i think i don't know with women maybe we have like yeah a little bit more like nuance maybe in like building up orgasm but maybe not listen uh, i don't have a dick I think so it's i don't definitely know. no no it it definitely seems to be not but, listen but I, you I, can touch I, yourself and arouse yourself and don't even come right i mean you have different ways and men can have multiple orgasms right if you train like tantra-esque things and whatever but i think it's mainly to touch yourself and get in touch with yourself your in body moments yeah exactly exactly yeah being vulnerable and like you know you know you're alone you can let it go you don't have Man, to be and like a lot of people don't even i mean a lot of women especially or like vagina owners or whatever haven't even looked at their vaginas right or their vulvas really in their um in full, i would like be fascinated I would be fascinated if I had a vagina. I know that. I would be looking in there. All the <laughs> I know, but but guys are so funny. I, I feel like um, I've heard so many I'm, times, you know, like I would touch my boobs all the time. I'm like, you wouldn't. <laughs> you probably would get bored of it after a while, but I can tell you that I, I don't want a vagina. I know that. Like I see the complication, the the complexity of the vagina relative to the simplicity of the penis is like there's there's no brainer choice there. If we're talking about going back to liking things easy, there's no frills <laughs> with the penis. It's <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious! No, it's it's, it's it's kind of a straightforward tool mechanism. <laughs> Anyone can understand it. It's simple to understand. That speaks a lot to the consciousness of you know masculinity and being a male and you that's know, pretty funny actually. It's yeah, funny. it's similar. I mean, it has real real clear <laughs> instructions. It's right? like yeah. no one's confused about what this is mm. for. No one has been like, I, mean, I don't even, get it. Even though I find it like always fascinating when I you know a partner or like a friend even or I talk. So, with so many people about sexuality, so who, yeah, yeah, of course. who says things to me, but just like the random shit that gets you guys aroused, you know, I just find it funny yeah. sometimes. Like a friend of mine was like, you know, sometimes it's just like the way the leaves move and I'm just... That's a horny don't, motherfucker. I, I'm like, I don't even know. And he's like, I don't even know what's happening, but it's happening. And I'm like, okay. Like I've never, I mean, I obviously, you know, I always said this thing, like I could be aroused by a, a white wall, you know, but really it's just my imagination. I don't look of at course. a tree and get wet. You it's know? a movement. You know what it is? It's like a kink. It's like there's a movement in a certain area of the psyche and soul that is aroused. And like, I don't know, maybe you were like a leaf, a leaf once. And like, you know, <laughs> like you're really getting turned on. And that's why all leaves are just getting super horned up every time the wind oh blows. Like, we don't know. So but I mean, like I... I do, I mean, I can, everyone I think can also, every male I know can speak to just the randomness, especially like when you're going through puberty or like mm. you're in, like, yeah. it's just like, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it could be just pure, like the strayest of thoughts or things. It's just, you're just horned up. I mean, there's just it's funny because I think in relation, they say, I mean, listen, this is just statistically speaking and stuff. So everybody's going to be different, but women need more context for their arousal statistically speaking than men do. I, I can speak to that for <laughs> sure because I do like really like in life I really do appreciate nuance subtlety kind of uh just like deeper potential depth of impact and energy but in sex yeah I mean it's 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 not it's obviously a very powerful and it can also achieve that level of depth but just very stupid things can can make me horny like just very stupid like this is ridiculous type level shit and I, I've literally laughed a few times after like jacking off to like some porn or something and I'm just like what are you doing like what like literally it was but an I mean, objectively like crazy. funny movie but porn's porn crazy. is insane porn porn's is crazy. so it does something very strange to you. I feel like it's like um, I feel like it's fast food or something. There's something so automatic. It's like, a, it's it's like so pressing funny. a button, you know, and you come, and you're like, "Huh? Why did I come?" <laughs> I mean, I grew. Well, I've I've definitely laughed. I just remember laughing a few times, being like, "This is too funny." Like, I I, I don't know what what realm. kind of porn did you watch? That I don't really even weird. remember <laughs> that specific one, but it was something just probably so stupidly ridiculous that just like. 
uh, like, you know, like a really crazy fat person, just like something like, just like, but gross, like meant to be gross out stuff. And I'm like, how did I get here? Ah. Why is this happening? I followed a stray thought somewhere. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is like a woman crushing a man. I'm like, well, I don't even like this. Oh, uh, you want to hear really actually, I, like I've told this before. Yeah, exactly. But like in a weird, <laughs> gross out way. And so like, I, I will tell you a really funny story. I don't know if I've said it on the show or, or to you before, but it's it's one of the, like the, the defining moments of my college career. <laughs> so I went to a music school. One of our final projects in all of our various classes had to be kind of a composition for each class. And you had to record it, produce it, mix it, engineer it, put it onto a CD and then hit mm. our thumb drive and hand that over to the professor. And so... I, 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 there is no shame if this is what you're into. I probably watched, you know, less than cumulatively like 10 minutes of it my entire porn watching career, but I had downloaded and uh, stored some, un- like literally downloaded. This is back in the days, like early 2000, where you had to download you said stuff. CD, you know, I'm like, I'm yeah, re-aging. CD. It's like burning <laughs> shit. Exactly. So, like, we, I downloaded it and it was P porn. It was just a woman oh, getting yeah. pissed on. And it's like, you know, standard prog fodder, like no, no, no shame at all. Somehow, and I shit you not, on this CD that contained my music project folders, the P porn got put on to oh, the CD. God. So now you have to understand the situation, right? This is not intentional on my part. I hand this in to this professor. I'll never forget. It was my Indian music synthesis professor. He was an Irish guy. <laughs> And I get an email back and it was like, you know, we need to talk. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, was this really good? Was it really bad? Like, what is it? Like, you know, I didn't. It was like. So I go into his office and he's like, you know, you're going to see what's on there. I don't know how it got. I don't know if this guy thought I was like hitting on him in some weird way. Because I've I've included, which you would need to think from like his point of view is intentionally putting porn on. Uh, a project folder like how could it get in on there you know it was like recent downloads or something must, it somehow got important he must have thought that it might have been a mistake i as oh soon God. as i get home fire up the thing realize what's on it send him an email like listen dude i don't know like what i this is an accident i was like i'm not even i, I didn't like i don't this. even know if i, I know right? like, i was like, trying to explain like oh, i don't even like this type of thing I said, so he he's just like, thinks mm, i'm some sure psych- <laughs> at this point he's thinking i'm a psychotic person whose love of pee porn is so great that i have to share it with him my professor oh, you're like, like this is my favorite um, oh my god that and so, is like so eventually funny. explained to him story. and i was like holy shit what the fuck is that? What if he it liked was, it eventually? Oh, know? I mean, it could have got way darker, or way weirder. I know that. I mean, I just, it, to me, it was just funny that like something that like was not even like a, anything I really looked at. It was just like a curiosity somehow got put like shared with another person who it, there's no sexual relationship with at all like this is just like a literally a professor at a music school i would never think that's the person you share your sexual oh proclivities God. to and oh i mean man, thank god it was, wasn't a woman can you imagine yeah it's good he wasn't a woman i mean it's good that he wasn't a woman it would have been definitely bad don't do that double check whatever oh you're putting god. and sending definitely double check oh shit. my yeah. god i'll never it's, forget that it's an incredible story you have to say it's a good story at least i got Wonderful. that of it i mean the amount mm-hmm. of like because you just get blind i think the times in life when you get blindsided with like something that happened is always like a unique experience like i don't usually get blindsided in like a crazy whimsical way but that was definitely one of those times kudos to him for reacting i think that's the only way you can react in that situation like what else can you do i mean you just like you just gotta hope that this person you know that that's isn't insane yeah but it probably you know depends on like how you were in class you know what i mean if you're already like a normal person person. yeah super normal like i wasn't super weird you're like okay like this makes sense if it's not a weird person you're like oh shit maybe just oh man I wish I remember that his, his, his first name was Kai. I wish I remembered his <laughs> last name. I would send him an email and see him like, do you remember that time? <laughs> do you remember that time I put people in? Like, Holy did you watch shit. it? <laughs> I wonder how many clips did you get through? I'm just taking a survey of all the people I by accident said people weren't to in the past. Oh my so God. Funny. But so yeah, good. you know, the mind goes off on tangents and you get 
you know yeah porn is nuts it's just there's no Porn's limits nuts. now there's no limits i grew up in the age where porn was just starting on the internet where it yeah. took like literally like an hour to download a jpeg that you could print out <laughs> on the computer of like one print pornographic out. scene <laughs> yeah i was um, Wait, no because i was 12 i was 13 so oh, like this is like yeah, you gotta yeah. remember this is like 95 96 okay, i was born in yeah. 83 so i'm a little older but like also like I'm a young, horny kid who doesn't have the internet. I literally had, like, my first experiences were Playboy magazines and Hustlers. Yeah, like, that's OG. literally what was available. It wasn't around, I mean, like, the way it is I mean, it's a complicated issue, I think. You know, I think there's something to be said about porn literacy, literacy that they're trying to teach in schools and, like, I mean, schools. What not, schools? Yeah, are not very successfully. There was this like um, high school in New York was a big scandal. I think a year or two ago, oh, no. where where they did a porn literacy class and all the all the teachers oh. or all the parents completely flipped out. But I think there's something to be said about that. Your teenage kid is gonna watch porn if you like it or not, and like to help them understand you know what that is and that it is fantasy and not reality and like that it's male cis centric right who is it made for about representation i think it's all very good to, for right i mean okay maybe people are gonna like lynch me now but i think the teenager is gonna watch it so they better should know what it is about you know um or young adults like life you know because depending on how much you watch it and like, but I think a lot of people learn through porn and it's not an educational tool. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not an educational tool. I mean, you'll learn about yourself. You'll learn about where you'll your mind you will go. You'll learn if you like porn or not. <laughs> There's a function to it. It's just, it's, it is, it's so accessible now. There's no real barrier to entry. It's, it can fulfill and kind of relegate a certain urge that can be very profound and useful in a lot of like real powerful ways in your life. Some of which we've spoken about, but like it can reduce it to a very unconscious, not productive yeah. no. result. And like, yeah, you could look at like coming as just like cleaning the pipes or whatever, but that's that's only true in a sense if there's like some recognition of what pipes you're cleaning. It's not just like a pipe. It's like it's not like it's yes. just like there's this thing you're doing and now it's better. It's like flushing something down the toilet, but like that goes somewhere. It's filtered through something. There's a process here that that exists. Be aware of what urges you may be kind of like satisfying and and also if you can use it in an intentional way. I mean, totally. I mean, I think this is about like living your life consciously or, you know, or not consciously it, in general, right? And so I think with intention, everything with intention will have like a different place, right? I, ha I had this, this thought the other day. I mean, I think about like living sensually a lot, you know, like in some kind of a sense in love with the moment or with whatever it is, right? Like somehow, I know there's always like, like I make myself crack up sometimes because because I give things emotional relevance, right? Like objects, for example, or something where I'm like, oh, it's sensual. I can make my food just to like feed myself, right? Or I can be sensual in it or like try to be sensual or intentional in that moment. Same thing with the masturbation I was just talking about, right? And like you said, you could just like fucking come really quick because you want to sleep or whatever, which is totally fine. Or you can like try to see how your body feels. You can make a sandwich and like, I don't know, put no intention into it. Or you can... Right, right. Or make a good yourself. sandwich. Yeah. Or make a good sandwich. Who doesn't know that experience of like really trying on a sandwich versus just doing the bare <laughs> I minimum. I sandwich is like the least sensual fucking food. <laughs> is it? I, do you want to know what? You may knock the humble sandwich. There's few foods in my life that I enjoy as good as like a classic turkey sub. Oh, I will same. eat the shit out of a turkey sub <laughs> and love that shit. I would put that in like my top five foods probably. It's not, really? it's, not fla it's not flashy. It's not, but it, in terms of consistency and mm. you can have a shitty turkey sub or you can have a good turkey sub you with the stuff That's you true. like or the stuff you really just need barely to call it a sandwich. Yeah, it's no, it's a fair enough analogy. I <laughs> I respect sandwiches enough to give them that honor. But, but yeah, I mean, in life is, is like that. No, I mean, it is. And that's, that's where we kind of look to, or at least I look to like, I, I've created and oh, it's, J it's 11, 11 on one, one, one. I just noticed that. 
That's fucking really? cool. Really? Yeah, cool. you don't see that every day. Um, but I have noticed like there is a real relationship between like just how you're feeling and what you want, the intensity of what it is you're doing and what you get out of life. Like I've really mm-hmm. experienced some truly incredible, amazing things, but there have been times where I felt like I have no ability or have no access to creation or, you know, being in resonance with my aspect of being. Totally. And it's at those times, A, I try to remember two things. One is without that frame of reference, you don't have to take it to the extremes I do, or, you know, you may at times, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> Without that reference point, you wouldn't know just how good and grateful you should be when things are really going pretty well or just what you think is maybe okay. Maybe there's more to be grateful and appreciative of because I remember like one of the hardest trips I ever went through was like a a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago at this point, um, where I took DMT, ketamine, nitrous, acid, kratom, weed. I was just going. Oh my, yeah, all together. And oh, it you're was like, crazy. With, <laughs> yeah, it was not, it was not smart. It was what you call very fucking stupid. I have like very deep reverence for psychedelics and like dissociatives. And at that night, I was just like, fuck it. I'm going as deep as I can. It was like, anyway, it did not end up well. But I remember <laughs> as I was surprise. coming, yeah, yeah, what a surprise. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember, um, uh, coming out of it and really being out of resonance with my being, being very suspicious, feeling very bad, feeling like out of alignment, feeling just kind of really off. And it took like five minutes, I want to say, for me to really reintegrate into my natural sense of being. And the first thing I could remember when I kind of like reconstituted this sense of identity or resonance I have is like, oh shit, thank God I live here and not the place I just was. Like, mm-hmm. because if that's on the possibility of living in that way of like, holy shit. And I'm pretty sure it's just a state of consciousness. It's not like some oh, yeah. foreign, crazy, magical thing no, that like right. I'm not going to touch again. So I, I just kind of, I, I touched it and I experienced it. And I think I actually got consumed by it. And that kind of played out over the course of like a year or so in my life. And I didn't recognize that monster was just like an own internal aspect of my being. Looking back, I can realize that at the time I had no idea what was going on. I thought I actually like encountered like parasitic entities. Who knows? Maybe also true. But anyway. Who knows? But the point, who knows? But like the point is, is that the one thing I really have learned from that experience and being out of resonance or feeling like you're not kind of clicking on all cylinders is there's benefits to those periods of time. And there, one of those benefits is also being able to come out of it and experience that kind of rejuvenation process. That That's something that really does yeah. always exist in part of our like spirit or soul or whatever you want to call it. And learning how to do that in a gracious way is, you know, really important because you're- It you, is, you, yeah. You will put yourself- and I do fundamentally think it's uh, us as individuals kind of resonating with it. You will put yourself through some gnarly fucking challenges in life because you are trying to uncover this innate power. And then it becomes more of a choice rather than kind of something we're ushered through. And I, I say this all the time, like we're lucky to live here in temporal time where things are relatively stretched out and slow because if every thought we had was immediately expressed in that moment of time and space, oh, we would not be enjoying ourselves. <laughs> like that's no, a Bardo state. And it's <laughs> really yeah. difficult. Yeah, no, that's not. It's not but it's not. but it's interesting because I think I I agree with not even psychedelics. I mean, I've I've taken quite a bit of psychedelics, yeah. but like never I'm I'm so sensitive I could never do what you did. Like Well, oh, can you believe I haven't touched tar- tar- any of those substances <laughs> since then really? Well, I had a little acid in Turkey, but like you know, not not <laughs> oh, I not going it. that deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing. Because I mean, it's just like even when we were talking about that suicidal thought that I had last year. Yeah. And then yeah. talking to you know some people and hearing that that's a daily occurrence, you know, and I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> that can also be a thing, you know, that that is something that, and also people who are really who've worked so much, you know, on on themselves and on their own consciousness and stuff and integrated it and learned from it. But 
yes, this to, to be able to have an experience that you then can come out of again, instead of that being your baseline. I mean, it's it's already yeah. something to be grateful for. Yeah, and it is. And even if it yeah. feels like maybe that's not where you are, that's where doing whatever practice, whether it's writing or masturbating or whatever it is, like it 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 really being taking the time to kind of like honor yourself in a way that allows you to intentionally focus on stuff. Sometimes it's effortless. Sometimes everything you're doing, you got the Midas touch and you're just like slaying it every which way. But it's important to understand that even if that's something you're familiar with and you've experienced or you're experiencing, having the knowledge and wisdom that you gain from like when that's not the case is equally if not more powerful because it gives you a tool in which to approach reality where like you're not at its mercy, which is the wrong impression to have because it is not anything doing something to you. It's you engaging with I mean, yourself, essentially. that is so crazy, right? Like, I think especially when when we go or when I experience something very challenging, right? To be then, to, to, to look at that aspect of it being like, oh, wow, okay, so if I am putting myself through this, first of all, what the fuck? <laughs> second it's not of all, a fun feeling. Second of all, it's, it, it, I mean, it really takes, I mean, it took some time for me to like see aspects of it and be like, oh, okay, I get it now. Or this is what I can get out of this, you know? Um, and then it's very powerful, like you said, because I think unfortunately through pain, baseline humans learn more than, you know, if everything's just like sm- going smoothly or something. It has to be... <clears throat> whether it's pain, there has to be some type of friction or dissonance. Yeah. Yes, because okay. dissonance you just, nice word. Nice word. you wouldn't have <clears throat> the ability to recognize resonance without it. Like that's unity. Mm. That's just like super omnip- omnipresent, omnip- omnipotent, like view of time and space and reality that's not what we're experiencing we are an aspect of that we are that as well it's not that that's not our innate like natural sense of being it's just like we're not going to kid ourselves and walk around and pretend that we don't you know identify as something like we're here in the story of our lives like whatever narrative we're subscribing to like it is a reality for now while we have this perspective so I mean, the ability to kind of shape that in a helpful way is something that I ultimately believe is possible for everyone. And even if it doesn't feel like that at certain points, just recognizing or doing the smallest of things to kind of remind yourself of that is actually a very powerful and transformational act because yeah. you're probably going to need it at some point oh, in your sure. life. Everybody will, right? And like whatever it will look like, it will look different for everybody. But I mean, everybody has their own challenges and tests and, you know. Yeah, and like a card that's been coming up a lot has been the nine of wands, which is the card of like the dude having the shit kicked out of him and the bandage <laughs> around his head. And it's like, oh, you God. know, it's like still <laughs> standing and like he's like holding this wand and he's like, oh, I'm still here. I just... You know, and it's like, it's it's one of my favorite cards because it's like, it's a state of consciousness that like a lot of people can identify with at mm-hmm. one point or another in their lives. It's like, oh, I just been through the fucking ringer, like emotionally or professionally or just like whatever issues financially, whatever you're dealing with in your life at any given time, everyone can relate to that. But it also does affirm that set state of being, which is like, you're still standing, like you're not dead. You're not on the floor not as who you are. So I I do think that like, hopefully I think Mars retrograde ends tonight, which has been in retrograde for like uh, seemingly forever. It is still Mercury retrograde, whatever. But I mean, um, you know, that Mars retrograde. Yeah. It's it's a really good question. So Mars retrograde is Mars is the planet of ambition movement. Mm. Um, It is also the planet of passion, uh, conflict can be war if we thinking if we're thinking in like Greek mythological terms like Ares, god of war, associated with um, Ares, also the planet, the ram, the fire sign. So when it's retrograde, relationships, uh, 
this can be intimate and otherwise are often unstable, I should say. Like they may feel that more conflict can arise, but it's also a time for reviewing those periods of your life, right? So like the relationships mm. that you're in or have been in, like there may be a lot of reflection there. But yeah, things can get confrontational at times. Um, you can feel kind of out of whack as it relates to other people. Um, it can certainly like slow down various things you may have been working on or wanting to come to fruition. Um, and, you know, it's been about a month and a half. I don't, it's not been forever, but just as an energy, um, yeah. if you kind of are in that realm, it, it certainly has kind of challenged things at times. It's always and good to now, take off the challenges. <laughs> yeah, I like when planets move forward and then get on with their lives and they don't have to hang out Seriously. in the same place. I'm looking at you, Mercury. It, t- it took down the fucking... Uh, all of the flights today, they got Oh canceled. my God, that's true. I saw it's that. the most classic Wild. Mercury. And it's not internet. It's just departure. Like you can't locally leave where you are. That's what Mercury is interfering with. It's like, now nah, you're going to stay here. It's been a real motherfucker, this Mercury retrograde. I, I'm not going to lie. How long and has I was it like, been? And when is it over? It's only been like a week. It's like over oh, in like okay. another like three weeks. It's like forever. <laughs> Seemingly forever. And like, you know, I we, we blame a lot of stuff on it. But uh, I do think it speaks to like the power of astrology is just a modality that a lot of people who take the time to kind of consciously look at what tools we have to reflect on ourselves and the nature of consciousness like the stars are pretty good ones like they do exist they are being upheld by some level of consciousness i don't think it's totally random i don't think it's just like oh the random enough of stuff exploding and then we find well they're still there they're fixed in thousands of generate you know years of consciousness for people that is going to have some metaphysical you know result so well, yeah, I even, would get, if it's, even if it's as simple as like the moon affects the tides so why exactly. should we somehow be affected by um, i mean it's planetary doing stuff so. with our physical yeah. planet and the energies from these planets i think i like to do it from an archetypal sense i i, I always tell people this i mean i know in our readings too i always try to remind people like this energy is you. It's not like there's some outside force exerting its will. So when we yes, say Mars yes, yes. is retrograde, it's the relationship between that particular energy and your own perspective in life. You may have had the most productive, you may have been signing deals, you know, getting happily married, whatever it is within a Mars retrograde period. They're not um, exclusionary. It's just that energy yes. as like a theme for the world that we choose to be aware of. You know, you can use that as a kind of tool within your own being to gain insight. Like that's all these things should be in my mind. They're they're yeah. ways to gain insight into the nature of our consciousness, which seemingly creates our reality. So it's useful. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on. I mean, thanks for this having been, me. So lovely. Been super be fun. Here. I'm glad to catch up. Let's also catch up off air too. I want to hear everything that's going on. But yes. I know we were talking briefly about it just before we go that you do have a podcast, Pussy Church. You haven't done it in a few months, but we were talking about just kind of not not the challenges, but the the ways of kind of like maintaining and sustaining a creative project that is done in yeah. a certain way and trying to make sure you find the right kind of passion to be able to do it because it's not something that like, you know, we're doing for immediate financial gain or like even like social gain. It's just something we believe, like to do. So what, I mean, we didn't speak about, it, but I know that you do have plans to bring something like that back in some format when you kind of get energized to do it. Yes, yes, yes. It's actually, I mean, it's somehow in the works. I mean, there's a couple of things in the works in general that are super exciting. I can't really nice. say so much about it, but I think with the show, Yes, I'm going to bring it back. Um, and I've already started working on it a little bit. Um, it's going to have a little bit of a different format. And maybe some of that, like, you know, mindful masturbation is going to come into cool. it as well. And some erotica for sure. Because I did some episodes before where I was reading erotica live. I mean, semi-live, I guess. And so I think it will go a little bit in that direction. So people have some tools maybe. To, I love it. Um, get in touch with themselves. Yeah. So, you know, also, I, I, I was thinking you could, because I'm doing a lot more streaming, you could just do like the Sia thing where you stream but are turned the other way and like no one will ever see your face, but you could still do streams. <laughs> I, I I, just feel like as, as a when media do you platform. 
I stream on Twitch, and okay, then if yeah. Twitch is down, I'll do YouTube. But Twitch, if you do the live streams and um, don't keep them up as archived episodes, but you can still download the f- files from the stream, but you don't get hit with copyright um, oh, okay. for music, for just whatever it is you may be doing. So I don't think that's like a sustainable approach to streaming, mm-hmm. but as an initial approach where you kind of are just trying to express yourself in a way that like feels authentic, um, I find it to be a little more suitable. I think Amazon owns it and they just pay all the copyright claims that come through. So it's like, all right, whatever. Okay. I'll yeah. That. That's cool. That's good to know. That's um, a lot so of I, fun things. People can find you on Instagram, Tales. Where else? Tell people where they can find and engage with what you're doing because you yeah. have been keeping active. Yes, you can find me on Instagram, Tales of Lara. Um, uh, I have a website, talesoflara.com. Um, there you can buy my erotic poetry book, um, a lot of other things, like fun things, like erotic puzzles, like some merch, um, some other some other erotic magazines done by incredible artists um, Yeah, from all over the world, a Brazilian one, one from the UK. Yeah, just like real cool community. So yeah, come by, (laughs) check it out. (laughs) And Pussy Church, obviously. There's tons of episodes you can listen to when you haven't stirred it yet. And it'll come back. Awesome. This has been super fun. And thanks for doing this. I know it's like later in the day for you there now. So. It is right now, but it's not that late and it's always amazing to talk to you. So thank cool. you for having me. Thank you. you enjoyed that episode it was fun uh go check out lara on instagram and she like i said she has her podcast pussy church she'll be doing that soon you know sometimes i gotta do stuff to say engaged and everyone deserves to take a break and find their kind of inner voice and share that uh a reminder if you've listened this far i think you probably liked it go check us out on patreon that's patreon.com slash synchronicity there are bonus episodes bonus content live streams music all the fun stuff that you wouldn't hear on this version of it uh yeah it's fun keep up with your writing shit down in your notepad it's fun stuff it's good times it really does work use it in tandem with whatever other techniques you're using but we're doing some shit uh happy mars retrograde ending sorry we're still in mercury retrograde i don't control the planets as far as i know probably do who knows okay until next week happy imagining